I decided to study botany because it was my favorite subject in school. I was awed by the contribution of Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose and fascinated by his work that showed that plants were living organisms and had a metabolism similar to that of animals. I developed a strong determination to find the locations of the heart and brain of plants and to understand the way they functioned. I had once seen a lady, you know, uh, coming from the special university buses and coming down, she was wearing a long coat, very elegant. And I always uh, thought what kind of a person she would be because he would always say she was very dynamic, very enthusiastic. And I really wanted to meet her sometime, someday. In the 1960s, before the advent of genetic engineering, Professor Shipra Guha Mukherjee was an embryologist at Delhi University. She worked in the unit established by Professor P. Maheshwari, the eminent botanist who pioneered the classification of plants and application of embryology in India. I first met Shipra somewhere in the early 70s. That time I was doing PhD in, in Delhi University. Professor Maheshwari was interested in cell division and cell cycle uh, processes. He had asked her to uh, use anther culture as a system to understand how the cell divisions occurs in the microspores. Pollen grains, also called microspores, are the male sex cells of a plant found inside the anthers. And anthers are the male reproductive part of the plant. These cells go through a special kind of reproduction called meiosis, where each cell divides twice to produce four cells. She was trying to understand the biochemistry of meiosis something that wasn't well known at the time. She was working on anther cultures in the Datura plant, which is known for its large anthers. During one of her experiments, Professor Mukherjee accidentally discovered something that would change the way we produce lab-grown plants. Plants have a very great trait. It's called tutipotency. Any part of the plant is capable of regenerating into an entire plant. You take a cell, you take a part of a tissue, a root, and they will regenerate into an entire plant. This particular feature was first discovered in 1950s. Then came Dr. Shipra Guha Mukherjee's momentous discovery. So they had cultured anther and they were trying to study the effect of cytokinins. Uh, these are uh, growth-promoting hormones. They added coconut water, which is very rich in that, and they just left the cultures. After some time, Shipra Mukherjee, she noted that there were some protrusions coming out from that. This was an excitement which uh, she talked to Pesa Maishwari that what this could be, and they found that these were actually some kind of embryos which were emerging out of the anther. She was going to throw away her cultures. She thought her experiment was over. And then accidentally she discovered a haploid organism can develop into an entire plant. Some of the world's most important discoveries have been accidental. Everything from penicillin to x-rays and LSD to Viagra. Professor Mukherjee's accidental discovery paved the way to producing haploid plants, a plant that can grow just from pollen instead of the usual fertilization of eggs and sperms to form seeds. It's something like saying from sperms one can make a human being. So it's that um, radical thought. People had been trying since 1928 to develop haploids, not through agriculture, but haploidy has a lot of uh, uh, usage in uh, agriculture, but this turned out to be the most uh, interesting, simple method, and uh, you can get haploid in large numbers. The implications of this discovery were huge. Haploid plants have one set of chromosomes and are capable of carrying a desired trait. These can be converted into diploids to reproduce the same desired trait in future plants. So that is the main turning point. 
that it provided a very efficient tool for plant breeding by giving you a hold on to the trait that you want to. Professor Mukherjee was interested in making a real impact with her science. So she turned her attention to rice because over half the world's population eats rice daily. She was successful in using anthaculture to produce haploid plants of rice. India actually, uh, after this discovery, there were not too many groups which came up. Uh, in fact, there were some groups which were even doubting whether these are really haploid in nature. And she later on went to Indian Agriculture Research Institute, uh, worked also with Swaminathan and demonstrated that not only in the Tura in Aksha, she showed it also in rice, that rice can also make the haploid plants. Uh, sorry to say, at that particular time, uh, you know, Nothing was done that this particular discovery could actually be used for applied purposes in agriculture. Whereas the other countries like China, they went far ahead. So as far as rice was concerned, normally you have two seasons, but they could have three seasons. They could get high yielding varieties, they could get pest and disease resistant varieties, so all by using haploids. For Professor Mukherjee, the challenges went beyond just the acceptance of her discovery. Most women in India at the time couldn't dream of a career in science. I felt I was swimming against the tide. No woman scientist could rise above a certain level and thus we felt mentally inferior to male scientists. Even in the US, the situation was not very different. At that time, there were no women, literally no women who were faculties at the university. So she was one of them who fought for that and told Professor P. Maheshwari he should be, you know, also giving chance to the women to accept such positions. And he blatantly said no because, you know, they will get married, they will get pregnant and uh, they will not come back. She had to fight the world, which was dominated by male scientists, but she would not fear anybody. She just went past and she actually made her name. And she encouraged us all to go ahead and, you know, pursue science as a career. While doing her postdoc work in the US, she was invited to take up a faculty position at the newly established School of Life Sciences at the JNU. Professor Mukherjee would become the first woman faculty of Jawaharlal Nehru University. Shipra Mukherjee was the pioneer in setting up the School of Life Sciences. She came from abroad. She had fantastic ideas, what kind of course curriculum should be there, tutorials and all kinds of things. Professor Mukherjee's personal life was as revolutionary as her professional life. She chose to return to India from the US after her marriage to mathematician Narayan Mukherjee and it took seven years for them to be reunited. Every single day, at lunchtime, one letter to her husband. That is what she used to write because they were apart for some time. Our father, the late professor Narayan Prasad Mukherjee, I mean his life as a mathematician at that time would have been certainly better had he stayed in the United States. He chose to come back to India just to be with my mom and support her. On the professional front, her work started receiving international recognition. She was invited to present at the EMBO Symposium in Italy in 1971 and the following year in Canada. But it was in China that she received the most gratitude. So she was really received in China you know, as a, somebody in the scientific field who has achieved a, a mark uh, in her career. I met Professor Hu Han, who appreciated our work on anthel culture and remarked that our work was responsible for a substantial change in the agricultural economy in China. This was undoubtedly one of the greatest moments in my life. Professor Mukherjee's personal and professional life faced a massive setback in 2005. 
she had a, a tumor in her right kidney in 2005 and she never realized it but uh, then the the cancer metastasized in her brain and that was terminal and i'm sure she went through a very very terrifying time because even the doctors told us that um, she was going through a very very hard illness but not once did i see her break down not once did i see her cry in front of us towards the end she shut out the world because um i think it was difficult for her to open her eyes and communicate and then june she had it then july august or september around 15 september she passed away the amount that i cried i think they were actually shocked because she was part and parcel of my life and i couldn't imagine a person like just going away and she was not that old i think maybe she was 67 68 we used to teach many courses together many of our research projects were together and she was a wonderful person so we'll we'll remember shipra for her contributions for what she did to the university to school of life sciences she taught us the small small things of life which you know other people would not even bother because she was herself a perfectionist and there's a big vacuum mm. you know Once. and we all remember whenever we say oh shipra jaise koi nahi tha she helped develop careers of many other women and other faculty members and she got students who also did very well i think that was a good part of her life that she accomplished professor mukherjee's legacy continues to shape the future of plant breeding in the world and it remains one of the crucial tools for food safety Arundhati Mukhopadhyay is part of a team of scientists in Delhi University using the principles of Professor Mukherjee's discovery. She wants to improve the quality of Indian mustard to better suit the needs of India's growing population. Indian mustard has very sharp taste and it has also very strong smell. Many people do not like it so to remove this by conventional breeding method will take years like maybe 30 years or so and we have to always keep in mind while doing this the oil production should not be compromised so by conventional method this will take about 30 years down the line but if we use this double haploid technique it might be accomplished in 10 years or 12 years time we had actually focused on professor shipra mukherjee's discovery at that time today with this changing climate we would have had more resilient plant and crop varieties which could tolerate drought and uh, heat conditions indian science has come a long way from the times of professor shipra guha mukherjee but still has a ways to go in acknowledging the contributions of its women scientists today when i look back I have no regrets and if at all I could change anything I would certainly like to also understand the psyche of many of my contemporary scientists and administrators and their attitude towards women. It is important to eliminate the damage caused by such attitudes so that in the coming generations women scientists will not have to waste their time combating them. <laughs>